Joining me now in the studio with more on the crisis in the coalition is Moshe Feiglin, the chairman of the Zahut Party. Moshe, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, you know, so my first question is, you know, are, are we heading to an election? Do you think we're heading to elections, or do you think that Netanyahu will somehow manage to, to pull something out, you know, a rabbit out of the hat and, and solve this crisis? Even, even if it will if it will happen, then then we'll have the election uh, three four three four months November, later. So yeah. it doesn't doesn't really matter. So just we so are we're facing an election. You don't think you don't think that it's a d it, that it makes any difference to move those elections up by half a year? It's, I mean, politically, it seems, uh, or, like, or maybe it seems it, like it makes some difference for Netanyahu because he's working very hard to do that. I don't know. He, I, I, I assume. Uh, there's a reason for him, political, good re political reason for him. But basically, we're facing an election, and I think this government must go. A government that cannot supply uh, basic security after mm -hmm. 500 rockets on the people of Zderot and, uh, and Ashkelon, uh, this government, with all its ministers, has to go. Uh, thinking, uh, and even saying it, as Tzachi and Egbi did, that this is a reasonable act and we can live with that, this is crazy. <laughs> what, what kind of a government, normal government, and definitely a government of a very strong state with a strong mm -hmm. army will take an act like that and simply go to, re to regular life after such an attack? So you, so you agree with Avigdor Lieberman that there should have been an incursion into, into Gaza? I definitely agree, but you know. But I, a uh, lot of the defense establishment, you know, Moshe Kachlon, he came, Finance Minister Kachlon, he came out and he said, you know, all the security heads are saying were unanimous against Lieberman. Forget about the security. Unanimous names don't interest me at all. Well, Lieberman was right, but there's a very big but. Mm. He should have put the keys before the decision and not after and say before the decision inside the government, if that happens, I, I will resign. Then he might have. Uh, change, uh, change something and, and had my full support. Once you're doing it only after, um, when you realize in, into what kind of a shock the Israeli uh, population got into, meaning from a, because of political reasons sure. and not from a real reason, uh, you, you won't get any of my uh, appreciation. So, you know, so you mentioned again that, you know, either way we're having, we're facing an election essentially and that this decision, obviously, as you mentioned, is not popular, the decision to uh, create a ceasefire arrangement with, uh, with Gaza, at least in the short term. So do you th what do you think the results of the election, should there be one early or if, if it's in November, what do you think the results will be? Will the Likud still be the ruling party? What will, he'll co what will such a coalition look like, if it's even that? I'll take a look. The question is, I don't know, mm. but these people have to go. These people have to go. Okay. Who, would you, who would you replace now, them with? Now, there's a, the Zahut the, the party that I'm leading, creating an alternative. That's why we are there. Saying that we are stuck with the existing leadership mm -hmm. will be a tremendous mistake. If you have a leadership that fails in such a tremendous way, they have to go and you have to create an, create so an alternative. What, so what would the Zahut party do differently in this situation? Let's, say, let's swap out Likud completely. Let's say you were in, in you know, the Zahut party was in power, you had a coalition of your own. What, you know, how would you, how would you uh, address this differently? How would you be running the government differently? You know, before President Trump got into office, he, sa he said, and everybody remember that, the two-state solution is not the only solution. It was Netanyahu that channeled, aisled Trump back into that direction of Oslo, into that direction of, of Obama. It was Netanyahu... So wait, do you disagree with the two-state solution then? Of course I disagree. We should erase the Oslo process completely, just like, like uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas did. Mm. Why do we continue with this, okay? The Gaza Strip is part of the land of Israel, just like, just like Jerusalem. And what would you do with the residents the, the, of Gaza? I, the, there's no other way than, ta than, than roll the, 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 the movie back of the last 25 years, the Oslo process well, was a tremendous mistake. But how would you, how would you propose the, to do that? Because right now the reality is, because we can say that, you know, Oslo was a good or bad decision, that's an arguable point, but the truth, the fact is that you have two point something million Palestinians living in the West Bank no, and Gaza. That's not, that's not the fact. That, that's a, that's a, <laughs> a, fa a fake details. That They're not living there? They don't exist? No, the numbers are totally fake. Totally. There's not really two million people in the not, West Bank and Gaza? Much, much less, okay? But that is not the point. Okay. What's important is 
that 95, 96% of them wish to leave. Some of them already paying, bar barbing the, 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 the regime, the Hamas. They pay $10,000 uh, to the Hamas to let them go. They hold, they all holding a refugee certificate from UNRWA, so they got to accept them in Europe mm. and, other, and, and other states. And here is the solution. They longing to go from that pit that the Oslo process mm. created in Gaza, their own regimes holding them there as prisoners. All you have to do is destroy the, the Hamas regime and open the gates of this terrible pit we created in Gaza, and most of them will leave. And Gaza will be like Yafo. Gaza will be a very, will be the new Riviera of the state of Israel in 30 years from now. That's the dream. All right, well, Moshe uh, Feiglin from the Zahud Party, thank you so much for coming in and uh, sharing your insights with us.